Nowadays we have Bamboo Lab, Creality, Chidi and other brand 3D printers that offer what Warns offered before any of them came to the market, great print quality at high speeds. But now, is it still worth making one? Why do people love them so much? Is this just hype or warm print quality is superior to consumer great 3D printers? Or maybe it is the longevity factor? There are so many questions and to answer them I built the warm 2.4 myself and put it through multiple deaths against Bamboo Labs X1C. So let's see if warrants are still relevant. This video is sponsored by PCBWay, more on them later. At this point in time, Warrant 2.4 is considered to be a flagship printer from Warrant design team. The most unique thing about it is the flying gantry with belts that automatically align it to be parallel to the heatbed. But because it is a DIY printer, judging its performance is an extremely hard thing to do because there are so many variables like how well you build it, how well you tune it and how good is the kit. The latter was provided by Fizek, so huge thanks to them. This one is definitely a budget kit that has a very aggressive pricing. The main issue that I had with it was that the aluminum extrusions were not cut perfectly square and had to spend too much time aligning everything up. Also, most of the provided fans are cheap ones that just blow, no pun intended, and the enclosure panels were thinner than they were supposed to be. So I ended up gluing parts with double side tape so that the side panels would be properly pressed onto the frame. As crazy as it might sound, these were the only issues that I had with the kit. Even the heatbed had a low deviation in flatness. Also keep in mind that I built it with additional upgrades, the stove burner and the tap. My most issues were with those and I will talk more about that during the video. So first let's address the elephant in the room. Warren 2.4 is not an easy printer to build. If you come with a mindset that everything will be like with Lego bricks and you won't end up having frustrating moments that require you to have problem solving capabilities, most likely you will have a horrible time. The most important part when building Warren 2.4 is having at least some experience, the patience, not rushing the build, printing perfect parts that aren't warped and don't have low adhesion problems and trying to make every step in the manual as good as possible. And if you decide to build the printer with mods, keep in mind that it makes the build process way more difficult as you will have to switch between multiple manuals and know what parts to print and not to print and when those come into play. Not to mention that you will have to know exactly what parts to buy for those upgrades in the first place. Plus those can give you additional problems with a build. At first I made my worn with plastic tap version, but the input shaping results were atrocious. The CNC version of the tap helped a lot, but even after further tuning I couldn't completely solve those issues. Maybe I should just design one myself using today's video sponsor PCBWay services. Well if I were to do that, 3D printing from plastic and even from metal wouldn't be the choice. Since you machining from aluminum is what we want as manufacturing precision is way higher. But maybe you have a lot of confidence that you can make a better design or have any other mods in mind. Well then check out link in the video description as ordering professional made parts was never this easy. So with all that out of the way, let's talk about actually using the printer and its print quality. First is the general use of the printer. I honestly found the official config way too basic, there even weren't any filament load or unload macros. The star print g-code was almost non-existent and I had to rewrite it to make sense for the warrant type upgrade. And because it uses the nozzle to probe the bed, ideally you want to clean it before probing for the most consistent results. Bamboo printers have macros that do all that automatically. But with tab documentation, the only macro that was provided was one that prevents damaging the build surface if you try probing at high temps. The same thing goes about preheating the bed. It is a huge thermal mass that needs so much more time to evenly heat the whole bed and you can't just start print when the thermistor shows the set value. We were huge thanks to Infrared who provided this T3 Pro infrared camera to see all the shots. The thermal resolution of it is just amazing and it will tremendously help me to provide a higher quality content based even on more data. But going back to the topic, that means that you have to manually preheat the bed and there are no official scripts for that either. The same goes for the heat soaking the printer when you print enclosed. It would be amazing if we had those as official macros. So as you see, the biggest disadvantage ease of use wise is that you will have to configure the printer yourself to be easy to use in the first place. And it is only up to you how deep you want to go with that. But what I think is the most important thing ease of use wise is never have to worry about the inconsistent first layers. 
Here we have a gantry that automatically aligns itself. We have an amazing probing precision and we can even implement the cam system to do bed leveling only in the area we will be printing. The potential to have the most consistent first layers here is just phenomenal. You just need to configure it. So what about the printing performance? Does it mean that by not using light with linear rods and instead using linear rails with aluminum extrusions it have a losers on the print quality at speeds? My design cooling test print showed that the stealth burner tool had with one 5015 fan and keep in mind that this one is not the stock fan, this is actually a good one, performed quite poorly. For comparison, this is how the print looks on the Bamboo Lab X1C without the auxiliary fan for the apples to apples comparison. A very clear difference in cooling performance. By the way, huge thanks to Bamboo Lab who provided the X1C so I could do all of these and future comparisons. Then the basic cylinder in the vase mode will show if there are any problems with the axis movement or extrusion consistency. And the results look really good. Also, keep in mind that these are shown in the worst possible lighting conditions to expose irregularities. And compared to X1C, I would say Warranty Point 4 results look slightly better. The third test is an absolute torture test for the ZHO performance that will impact the real prints. And they looked pretty good and again were slightly better than X1C could produce. I also checked the Z-axis movement consistency with a dial indicator and results of only 0.01mm of inconsistency confirmed that the Z-axis movement is solid enough with 4.9mm with bell design. So does this change my mind about the belt in Z-axis? Not really, as I already concluded that it could perform better with more and wider belts and this is exactly it. It is still not as precise compared to a ball screw, but on Warren 2.4 this is a great choice cross performance and space wise. Then the automatic bed leveling. From all my experience with Warren 2.4 and from first layer test print results, I would say first layer consistency here is amazing. Just make sure you heat soak the printer before you print as otherwise the thermal expansion will be the reason for inconsistent first layer. You can also play with the advanced Z thermal adjust option to cancel out this effect. Also the Warren will always have the advantage as such the heat bed provides the flattest possible bottom surface of the prints. Last but not least is the ghosting artifact test print. As my input shaping results weren't that great, you can see those tiny defects in the x-axis results. But what surprised me the most was the y-axis results of the Warren were better than on X1C. However, there was more smoothing with those less ghosty prints. This means that the tiny details won't be as clean as X1C could produce. I feel this is where bamboo printers shine the most print quality wise with that lightweight design. But then how often do you need to print those tiny details and is it a good trade off for more ghosting? Only you can answer those questions depending on what you print. This leads us to the max flow rates. This one depends on what hardened you will be using. I chose TZ2.0 with a hardened CHT clone nozzle that I checked out in one of my previous videos. I got max flow of 22 cubic millimeters per second with stepper motor set at 0.4 amps before it started skipping steps. I tried running the same test on X1C, but I couldn't do that as most likely it has some sort of over extrusion protection. However, I have bamboo hot and results with a BMG extruder and they are not that impressive in this comparison. But nothing is stopping you from using the same hot end on bamboo printers as it was designed to be drop-in replacement that can offer around 60% more flow. So as you see, performance-wise, Warren 2.4 is still a very capable machine that can easily go head-to-head -head even with X1C despite being bigger and heavier. But the things that make Warren 2.4 so good are all the design decisions. For example, the build volume to printer space ratio is just excellent. That is only achievable with a great design that utilizes every millimeter inside. Noise levels when printing are very minimal and other printers come not even close to this. All panels have foam tape to reduce vibration transfer to them and better seal the gaps. I barely get any smell when printing ASA and I don't even have the Nevermore carbon filter installed. In comparison, X1C releases noticeably more smell to the outside. 
than the longevity. I doubt I need to say anything about this one as Warren 2.4 uses linear rails which will last way longer than the current annoying trend of gluing linear rods and bushings. There's so much to love here, especially if you're a person who likes to tinker with printers. In my opinion, the only downsides of Warren 2.4 are that it comes with way too basic stock config and that it needs a lot of time to evenly heat the bed. It is not that amazing for high speed PLA printing as cooling is on a weak side, but what it is is an absolute ABS printing beast and the tinkerer's dream with design decisions that tick almost all boxes. Combine that with completely full control of the printer without any BS and the package is almost impossible to beat. So no wonder why so many 3D printing enthusiasts love them so much. However, if you are a person who wants just to print and not to deal with all the insane work required to build a printer and all the tinkering and tuning, it is also impossible to argue that Bambula printers are not great choices, especially as they offer the most flushed out user experience from any of the printers and the insane bang for the buck. I really hope this video helps you decide what route you will take. Thanks to everyone who likes and follows the channel and huge thanks to all supporters on Patreon and YouTube. That's all from me and we'll see you next time.